Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about NFTs. If you don't know what an NFT is or you've heard about them but are unsure, then this video is for you. I'll be explaining what they are, giving a brief overview of the history, explaining the types of NFTs available and how they can link into today's market, including DeFi, gaming, real estate, art and many others. Because of how in-depth I will be going into our subject matter, it means that my video may be slightly longer than usual. So to make it easier to navigate between sections and to jump ahead if you're not particularly interested in the section that I'm talking about, I've included timestamps in the video description, so make sure you make use of them. Before we get started, also, if you are new to Bitcoin for Beginners, make sure you like and subscribe to stay up to date with all of the new content as we upload it. Don't forget to check out our pin post in the comment section below. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so NFT stands for non-fungible token. Non-fungible means that it is unique and cannot be replaced by something identical. For example, a $100 bill is worth $100 regardless of which $100 bill that you are currently in possession of so i could exchange a hundred dollar bill with you and we both still have one hundred dollars however something that's non-fungible is unique in its specified characteristics think pokemon cards for example there are loads of them out there but some of them are unique in their characteristics in comparison to others for example you're lucky enough to have a first edition shiny charizard that card does not have the same value of a more recent shiny charizard from the 25th or 26th series of pokemon cards that are out therefore the shiny first edition charizard would be non-fungible because although it is similar its intrinsic value its uh, characteristics are unique to that card and do not transfer across the same card from different generations. NFTs first became a reality back in 2012 with the launch of colored coins on the Bitcoin blockchain. Colored coins were made up of small denominations of Bitcoin as small as a single Satoshi. These colored coins were used to represent real world assets, for example, property or collectibles. The downfall with colored coins was that they only held their value if everybody that was holding them agreed on what their value was. In 2014, Counterparty allowed asset creation and also had a decentralized exchange for the trading of NFTs as well as launching its own token that went by the name of XCP. In 2015, the game Spells of Genesis was launched and they pioneered the issuance of in-game assets to the blockchain. Fast forward to 2017 with Ethereum gaining traction, NFTs made the inevitable move over to Ethereum and its smart contract platform. In June 2017, CryptoPunks is launched on the Ethereum blockchain, allowing anybody with an Ethereum address to claim one of 10,000 CryptoPunk NFTs. And recently, CryptoPunk 4,530 sold for 185 ethereum that's approximately 63,000 us dollars in october of 2017 one of the most famous nft projects was launched that's crypto kit is and in amongst the height of the bull market along with some clever marketing they almost brought ethereum to its knees going from 2018 to present we have more and more platforms being launched enabling the trading and creation and tracking of nft protocols on various different blockchains okay so now to take a look at the type of non-fungible tokens that are out there the most common nfts available are erc 721s and erc 1155s the erc 721 token represents a single unique asset whilst there is complete flexibility in the creation of a token erc 721s are solid in terms of immutability transparency of ownership and security in being completely unique erc 721 tokens are commonly referred to as non fungible one of the shortfalls of erc 721 tokens is that they are costly and can be slow to transfer when you are sending multiple at the same time if you think of in-game items you may be sending an entire kit of armor or a series of consumables to a, another player or to your character and you may want to send a lot of erc 721 tokens and you would have to send 
a unique transaction for each individual one. This brings us on to the ERC-1155 tokens. The ERC-1155 standard was developed by the engine team to solve the problem of ERC-721 tokens being costly and slow to move. The ERC-1155 allows you to wrap, if you will, ERC-20 tokens and ERC-721 tokens within the one contract. So you can transfer several NFTs and uh, ERC-20 tokens at the same time, but only process one transaction. The third type of NFT that I'm going to talk about is the RGB protocol on the Lightning Network. In June this year, it went into beta on the Lightning Network. It's referred to as the RGB protocol in respect to its origins as colored tokens in 2012. And its main aim is to bring NFTs to the Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, as well as increased security within the Lightning Network. Now to talk about some of the use cases for NFTs, and I'm going to start with DeFi, as DeFi is a buzzword at the moment with the market absolutely exploding. There's a lot of exciting uh, use cases around DeFi, and many that we're probably not even aware of and haven't discovered yet. Uh, and will encounter as time goes on. One of the best examples of use cases uh, combining DeFi and NFTs is Avogachis. If anybody remembers Tamagotchis and how you had those kind of 8-bit characters that you had to keep alive, Avogachis kind of play on that aesthetic and they create unique NFTs based on collateral that is tied up into the platform to generate interest. So this means that every NFT on the within the Avogachi platform has a unique characteristic, so scarcity and rarity, but also has underlying value that doesn't change and if anything increases over time. So this increase in collateral is tied to that contract on top of any rarity of the NFT helps increase the value of the NFT and you don't run the risk of buying something or locking up those tokens and then them becoming worthless at a later date. This very neatly brings me on to the meme protocol. Meme is an experimental protocol mashing up some of the most exciting innovations in DeFi and crypto collectible. Put your meme to work by farming exclusive NFT memes. By incorporating the staking and yield farming mechanism that we see so readily in DeFi and tying the payouts to NFTs, they are giving those memes an intrinsic value because they have been farmed. Value would be tied to that of the meme token to a degree. Now, in terms of meme, the key words there is experimental. They are not taking this project seriously. This is them playing around and finding out what is possible. If you check out the website at don'tbuymeme.com, then it tells you not to buy meme. They are very, very clear in their memes and their information that this is an experiment and the chances are it will at some point become worthless. Linking back to the types of NFTs and ERC-721 tokens uh, in their uniqueness, one of the problems with ERC-21 is that it's not divisible. You cannot break up. This brings us on to Niftex. Niftex facilitates the fractional ownership of NFT tokens. The platform enables the division of NFTs into fungible tokens that conform to the ERC-20 standard. They refer to these fungible pieces of NFTs as shards. This means that you could own a single piece of a much larger, more expensive artwork. If we think about the CryptoPunk 45. 4513 where it sold for 185 ethereum you could in theory fractionalize that nft and sell 185 parts for a single ethereum that would mean that all 105 pieces would be their each would be their own unique part of that nft and all people owning it would be able to have transparency of ownership now to talk about NFTs in the form of art. There is a booming marketplace for NFTs as art across the internet. Whether these are digital paintings, GIFs, or even photographs. Recently, Right Place and Right Time, which is a digital artwork by Matt Kane, sold for 262 Ethereum. That's over a hundred thousand dollars. That's really is showing that the space is growing and developing and adoption is well underway. There's a wide range of marketplaces 
available for art in the form of NFTs. These include places like um, Async Art, Rareable, OpenSea, and many other that you are more than welcome to go and check out when this video concludes. Now let's talk about the marketplace that has over $10 billion worth of spending. Yeah, that's it, it's gaming. Obviously, as I mentioned, there were the collectible, there, there is the collectible side and trading side, similar to CryptoKit is. But did you know that NBA have an official trading card game that is purchasable on the blockchain? Each individual trading card has attributes that record on the blockchain its rarity, its transaction history, and various statistics for that player. And if you're interested in that and would like to go check it out, it's NBA Top Shot, and the link to the website will be in the video description below. There's a growing number of trading card games available, similar in ilk to Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Magic the Gathering, and you know, Top Cards, Top Trumps, all the, the trading card games that we used to play as kids. Now, these are easily transferable across the entire planet. They are traceable and they are non-fungible. We're starting to see an increase in the amount of game studios that are exploring NFTs as in-game assets, with platforms like Polyink Games opening their own marketplaces to enable users to trade items across games. One of the most exciting bits of news that has been floating around um, for the past year or two is engine coin and their attempt to bring a genuine asset ownership to mojang's minecraft now minecraft has millions and millions of users all over the planet that have been like true die hard fans that have been playing that game for many years to be able to give them true ownership of items within game enchanted items to trade and send amongst friends is absolutely mind-blowing and if it takes off although it is available on some select servers if it was to take off and see mainstream adoption that could truly revolutionize gaming as we know it today some of you may be thinking can you mine them and, and how and where can you mint them or create them nfts aren't mineable in the sense of a cryptocurrency is mineable um, however the way that DeFi has taken it has incorporated the mining or yield farming and the reward being the NFT, for example, meme protocol. In terms of creating an NFT, if you're not a developer or a programmer, there are platforms like OpenSea, Rarible, Mintbase, and Cargo. All of these allow you to upload images, GIFs, video files, audio files, videos, and attach them to an ERC721 token. Be aware of the transaction fees of creating a smart contract alongside the the sending backwards and forwards of the said token which you've created it and so be mindful of those fees because there's no guarantee the nft that you create will reflect the value later on that you spent in creating that contract okay so what's in store for nfts i mean the simple answer is i have no idea the the possibilities are endless and I 100% think that NFTs aren't going anywhere. They've been here for quite a while, and I'm very excited by the potential they have to stick around and develop as we go on and find new ways of using them. So there's a couple of points that I want to first talk about. The market cap for NFTs overall has grown from 180 million in 2018 to 210 million in 2019. But I, I think with the hype that's starting to generate around them, there's gonna be some exponential growth in NFT's future. We also have to consider that there is the, the fever that we recently experienced around DeFi is starting to fizzle out somewhat and people are starting to look for the next big thing and, and huge profits. Now, the fact that I'm talking about NFTs shows you that they are starting to gain traction and there is hype about them. So I, I couldn't tell you where those profits are going to be found, but I would imagine that we are going to see some big growth f uh, from certain projects in the near future. There is of course also mine, you know, think games like Minecraft or you know the next big, cri the CryptoKit is version three being launched. There are other games um, out there that are gaining traction. And if, for example, the Minecraft integration was launched in partnership with Mojang, uh, we would see absolutely 
you know parabolic growth in the value of nfts and the the market cap of nfts overall okay so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please make sure that you send us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and if you want to stay up to date of our latest pieces of content as we upload them you can hit the bell icon to receive notifications if you haven't already why not check out some of our other deep dive videos where we go more in depth about subjects and topics that you guys want to know or should know about in detail i've been for Bitcoin for beginners. Take care.